Hi Sengwan, so for today we are going to move on with the Singapore story and we are going to figure out how did the British gain control of Singapore. Okay, so everything will be referred to on page 19 of your contents package. So please turn to that page. Okay, so again our lesson objectives for today's lesson basically is to describe how the British, namely Raffles and Farquhar, set up a trading settlement in Singapore with the signing of the 6 February 1819 agreement. Okay, you will have done the flow chart before this video. So I'm going to summarize everything that you have discovered on your own first and put it into context and clarify any misconceptions or misunderstandings you may have had. Okay, so just before we go straight into it, Here's a quick lesson recap. In the previous lesson, okay, the previous content lesson, you would have figured out and discovered why did Raffles choose Singapore as a trading settlement. Okay, the main thing over here is why. So there were three reasons. Number one, strategic location of Singapore, right? Because it was in the main trading route between India and China. Okay, and also the key thing is that because it was in the main trading route, it wanted this location, the British wanted this location to break the Dutch monopoly. Okay, second reason is because of its excellent port. It had deep waters so that the ships can dock easily. Convenient midway point to be protected from the strong monsoon winds. And it also provided fresh water supply for boats and traders. Okay, and the last one is because it's not occupied by the Dutch. The Dutch did have some indirect control over Singapore. Okay, remember this because it will be covered later on. But it didn't have direct control. So the British could actually set up a trading settlement in Singapore. Okay. Now, we are going to go on for this lesson to how did the British namely Raffles and Farquhar, gain control of Singapore as a trading settlement. If you realise, I made the word how in blue and in bolded letters because this is our focus for today. We are going to see the steps into how they actually gain control. Okay, So I'm going to refer to page 19 of your contents package and also pages 84 to 86 of your textbook. The textbook has nicely summarized it into a story, okay, but today I'm going to also break down the story a bit more to you and explain a little thing about it, a little more about it so that you fully understand it, okay? So in your worksheet, you would have also seen this. It began with a succession dispute in the Johor Riau Sultanate, okay? We need to break down what the succession dispute mean. So you can also write this down in your worksheet. It basically means that there was a conflict between two or more individuals claiming the right to be a ruler or king. So basically, whoever is going to succeed the king after the king has passed, okay, and there's a conflict with it, this is called a succession dispute. Okay, so you must understand this term first. Next, we need to know who are the key players in this whole dispute and all the way that led up to the 6 February 1819 agreement. Okay, the characters are number one, the British, which are Raffles and Farqua. Okay, of course there are many others, but I will name, not name all. Okay, number two, Tengku Abdul Rahman. Tengku, okay, again, please understand this term. Tengku means children of state rulers. So in the moment you see a tangu before the name, right, it means that it is the children of a state ruler. Similarly, there's also tangu Hussein, also a child of the state ruler or the king. Number four, there's a Tamangong, which is different from the tangus. The Tamangong is basically a Malay chief and is responsible for the safety of the sultan. Sultan is the Malay name for king, right? Okay, so the Tamangong also belongs to the ruling party. Lastly, it is the Dutch. Okay, so now let's begin our story. 
Okay, in box 1, I already have filled this up for you. Okay, when the Sultan Mahmud passed away, only the younger son, Tengku Abdul Rahman, was present, while the older son, Tengku Hussein, was absent. Okay, and naturally, when the succession happens, right, it's always the older son or the older child that will take the place of the king. Okay, but what happened? Basically, the Malay chiefs and the Dutch supported Tengku Abdul Rahman because he was present at his father's death to become the next sultan. So even though Tengku Abdul Rahman was the younger son, the Malay chiefs and the Dutch who had indirect control of Singapore, okay, they wanted him to be the next sultan and they made him so. Okay, so they were happy about it. However, Okay, there will always be people who are unhappy, which in this case, it was Tengku Hussein and the people who supported him, okay, like other Malay chiefs. But then they couldn't do anything because they didn't have power and they didn't take control over the whole situation. So what did Tengku Hussein do? He went away and he lived in Riau. Riau is some islands of Johor and Singapore. Okay, so Tengku Hussein went away. Now, after this, Raffles and Farquhar heard about it. That's when they come into the picture. Okay, and the Temenggong, which is again part of the ruling party, he told them, if you want to take over Singapore as a trading settlement and set up here, okay, you must get Sultan Abdul Rahman's permission to set up here. Okay, but remember that Sultan Abdul Rahman is under the Dutch control, right? So, of course, this made Raffles and Farqua unhappy. Okay, because the Dutch definitely wouldn't give them the control. So, how? What can Raffles and Farqua do? Okay, that's when they thought of an idea. They said, okay, let's take advantage of the Dutch who were not in Singapore and then they chose to support Tengku Hussein as the rightful sultan because since he was the older son, right? And they negotiated with him and said, okay, if you allow me, the British, to set up a trading settlement in Singapore, then I will make you the sultan. And of course, what did Tengku Hussein do? He thought this was a great opportunity. He agreed to it. So what did Raffles and Fakwa do? They smuggled him back to Singapore with the Temenggong's help, and then they proclaim him the new Sultan of Johor. Okay, so if you can see on the left, you can see the two Malay chiefs, Tengku Hussein and Temenggong, and also Raffles and Farqua having the discussion there, okay, and how they smuggle him back in. Then, after that, 6 February 1819, that is when the signing happened. Since everything was planned out well already, right? Raffles, Fakwa, Tengku Hussein, Temenggong then signed a treaty to allow the British EIC to set up a trading settlement in Singapore. Okay, and in return, Tengku Hussein, Temenggong would receive protection and yearly allowance, basically money from the EIC. So, of course, it is a good negotiation and a settlement. They say, okay. You can set up here since I will get the money as well. Okay, so that is how the British officially gained control of Singapore. Okay, after some negotiations and agreements with the Malay chiefs in Singapore. Okay. Alright, so if you were a bit confused, I'm just going to summarize the whole story once more so that you can clarify your misconceptions and also those who have understood it make sure that your understanding is correct and accurate. Okay, so number one, how did the story all start? Basically, Raffles and Fafa wanted to establish a trading settlement in Singapore. Okay, however, the Dutch, which supported Sultan Abdul Rahman, had control over the area. And just naturally, they wouldn't give the British the permission to set up a trading settlement here. Okay, so British... Raffles and Fakwa were stuck, right? So what did they have to do? They had an idea and they smuggled Tengku Hussein back to Singapore to proclaim him as Sultan. 
Once they proclaimed him as Sultan, they had control together with the Malay chiefs over Singapore as a trading settlement. Okay. Lastly, now because everything has worked out, Singapore became under the control of the British, which is Raffles and Bakwa. Okay, on the right, you can see the 6 February 1819 agreement. Um, if you wish to, you can actually zoom in and read the official writings on the agreement. Okay, so by 6 February 1819, that is the official date that Raffles and Farqua had control over Singapore. Okay, the reactions of how the Dutch and the British and Tunku Abdul Rahman and everything else in reaction to this agreement will be covered in the next lesson. Okay? So, to summarize it in another way as well, you can also visit this link, okay, type it in your YouTube or your search engine. Okay, it's a video that summarizes the signing of this treaty very well between Singapore and the British. Okay, with that, I end this lesson. Stay tuned to the next lesson, which would talk about the next part of the Singapore story. Okay, thank you.